Hey there, Get Up and Go Challenge, day four. Sharon Horn Elstrom here, and we just finished going through our soap model. The soap model, this is up at the cabin with my weird bar of soap. And today, we, I went through it. My left knee still hurts. I'm gonna still continue to work on the physical aspect of my life. But I said we would go on to the wealth area. I'll explain financial and why. Because this is a biggie, and this is, for most people, absolutely millions and millions of people right now with COVID-19 going on in August 2020 still. We've been impacted for about six months now, March, April, May, June, July, August. Six months we've been dealing with a just chaotic, crazy, misinformation situation. And for many of us, that has meant financial impact. Some people, believe it or not, have, have gained tremendously through the COVID-19 pandemic. Think certain pharmaceutical companies, think certain industries, think, think Lysol, think Clorox wipes, think uh, toilet paper, think any of the, the things that are necessities to us or essential products that have just gone haywire. Think of at-home delivery, think of working from home, think of all the positive things that have happened because of this, and then think about your current personal financial situation. I, like everybody else on the planet, has had an impact on my financial situation due to COVID. Now, positive or negative, not necessarily gonna say, but let's talk a little bit about that. Last time we talked about the S, we're talking about the S in SOAP today. S stands for situation or story. And we talked last time about using a framework to make sure we're getting all the facts and all the information about our current story or sometimes our past story and where we wanna be. So we've got the story about what's going on right now. What, what is, what just is, right? And it, we're not gonna judge it whether it's bad or good. It just is what it is. And then what do we want it to be? So say financially, most of us are, and, and let's just assume people are struggling right now. Everything's changed, not everything, but a lot of things have changed. Businesses have gone under or have been shut down overnight. Um, jobs have gone away. Everyone knows somebody that's lost their job or is out of work right now, or their business has been shut down or gone out of business or whatever. All of us know at least one person if it hasn't happened to us personally. So the money and the resources we were counting on disappeared or dried up. Have you ever lost a big customer? Has anything like that ever happened to you in your business and there's a massive change? Well, guess what? Now there's millions of people going through the similar situation simultaneously, which for me makes me feel better because I know that I'm not alone. I'm not alone in what I'm experiencing and what I'm feeling. And so often when we're going through a change or a challenge, we do feel like we're the only one. Well, that's a lie we tell ourselves because there's seven plus billion people on the planet. So anything we're experiencing at any given time, there's a whole lot of other people experiencing the same or a very similar circumstance. So financially, where am I? The question we want to ask ourselves, where am I right now? What's my financial situation this minute? And what do I want it to be? Maybe it's I don't have enough of a certain area. I don't have a job. I've lost revenue. I don't have an income. I want to bring in more money. And ultimately, I don't ever want to even have to think about resources or money or finances. I want there to be so much that I never even have to, to be concerned about it or think about it. So maybe that's your story. So whatever your story is, instead of just what's the who, what, where, where, my framework, let's go a little deeper on that. And let's talk about uh, some of our beliefs or our past experiences and how they're actually impacting how we're responding to this current situation. Because guess what? Wherever we are, we bring all of our past, all of our past experiences with us, and that's part of how we respond. So maybe, and I wanna talk deeply about the beliefs and the mindset that comes along with this, because part of our story and part of our situation is always based on our past experiences and our beliefs. Now, it doesn't mean we have to continue to, but if we don't at least recognize that they might be playing a role in our life. For example, when I was a kid, and I probably was a sophomore or junior in high school. I loved music. I had, um, when I was young, gotten an album. I remember back when they had albums and phonographs, my very first one was an Elton John album. And I don't remember if I was gifted or how I got it, but I loved that album and I played it over and over and over again. Probably drove my sisters nuts, but that's why I had my own room, so I didn't drive them nuts. And I decided somehow that I loved music 
and I wanted to get my own stereo. Now I grew up in a family of four girls and girls are expensive, kids are expensive. I don't know if you know it or not yet, but kids are expensive. And so I wanted this stereo and I started looking and, and searching and I didn't just want any stereo. I wanted one of those like rack systems with the receiver and the phonograph and the, um, what's it called? The, um, when you, you balance the equalizer and you balance all the things and the giant speakers and the little speakers. That was back before, you know, our cell phones or our MP3 players or, or CDs or Walkmans and things. It was back when we had vinyl, vinyl, vinyl records, right? And we had, then we went to cassette tape. So I needed a cassette player with multiple decks and different playings. And then later that became CD-ROMs and CDs and things. Uh, but the technology changed. But back then in high school, I wanted this super duper deluxe fancy stereo because I knew I was gonna go to college. And when I went to college, I wanted to bring my music with me because I loved music. So I started saving and, and saving my money and researching because we didn't have the internet back then, what I could get and, and how much money it was gonna take for me to get this ultimate stereo I wanted. And it took me, I think, two years to save up for working odd jobs, doing different things, I had a little ice business. Uh, it took me a couple of years to save up because this thing was thousands of dollars back in the mid to late, this would be the mid 1970s that I started saving for this. And back then it was a couple thousand dollars. So it was ridiculous. It was something I would never even consider asking my parents for. So I knew I had to earn the money myself. So I've always believed that if I want something, if I want something different, then I need to work for it. I need to earn it. I need to put forth the effort and earn it. Now, that's a belief that, that served me really well in some instances, but it's also not always serve me well. So I wanna look at that belief and other beliefs to decide what's right for me going forward. What do I need to do going forward? And it's part of analyzing my situation. So maybe you have beliefs like, and I, I will admit I'm guilty of all of these at some point in my, my life, and, and some of them still affect me, some of them not so much. So for example, I might believe that I can't afford something. And I didn't realize how deeply ingrained that I can't afford or I don't deserve or I'm not worthy is still a part of my life. Even though I've been working on it for decades, it still creeps in. So we think we do all this work on our personalities and in our personal development. And then all of a sudden, after years of, of thinking that something's done with us, it pops up and rears its ugly head. And I didn't realize I was doing that at all still until my son reminded me, he said, you just said this to my daughter. And I'm like, oh my God, it was, she had asked for something. I can't even remember what it was. And my first response was, well, we can't, that's really expensive. We can't really afford that right now, which is ridiculous, right? But I, it came out of my mouth and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. And then the other day, even I noticed we were looking at this little freezing tray to make ice cream. And I told her, oh my God, that's really expensive. It was like $75. And so what kind of message am I sending her? But also what kind of message am I sending myself that I can't afford to get my daughter this cute little fun toy that she wants? Whether it's too expensive or not, that's ridiculous. So how deeply ingrained are some of your beliefs? So as you're, you're telling your story and, and describing your current situation, ask yourself, what are some of the beliefs that are popping up? So I can't afford it. I'm not worthy. It's too expensive. I don't deserve this. Why should I have that? What makes me think I should have that? Say you want to replace your income because you lost your job and say to, to live, your family needs three to $5,000 a month. Say they need $3,000 a month to meet your core needs, to make your house payment, to, to feed your family, to get gas, to pay insurance. And you know, bottom line, you got to have $3,000 a month coming in you know, not including taxes and all the other things that would come out of it, but you got to have that. So you decide that and you figure out that's what we need to get through this period and, and however long this period is going to be. And then, um, and right now that's gone. You're telling yourself the story that that's gone because I lost my job, but you still feel like you need it. So your what does your future story look like? So what is your current situation? What is What do you want your future? to be and then we're going to start to bridge that gap through of course our soul framework so today just think about this thing I just want to framework so that you know that there's levels to it it's not just oh what were when why and how what is my story da, 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 da. because 
we want to get into remember on day five we talked about going seven layers deep on asking ourselves why if you add that on top of this it makes it so powerful the, the vision of what you want it just solidifies so as you take a step toward it and maybe you feel like oh that didn't work at all that was an epic failure i totally tried something and it didn't work instead of giving up you say okay that didn't work what's next what am i going to do next so today as of your action item as your play item for your playbook or workbook share one thing one thing about, or a couple sentences about, just briefly, your future vision, what you want your vision to look like for whatever area it is of your life that you're working on. So maybe you're still working on physical, or maybe you pick mental, or emotional, or spiritual, or contribution, or relationships. Maybe right now your relationships are just driving you crazy, but you know how you want them to be. So what's the story you're telling yourself? Think about that, but then just share in the comments below a couple of sentences about your vision, your ultimate vision of what you want it to be. I want us to remember to focus on where we're going with some of this so that we're focusing on the results that we want. We're not always focusing on what it's like or what's not working now. I think last time we went through, we, we did the opposite. We flipped it from what is to what's possible. And I want this time us to go a little deeper and then say, okay, here's the beliefs, but do that same strategy on the beliefs. If you say, I can't afford it, say, I can't afford not to have it. I don't deserve, well, I'm a planet. I totally deserve this. That someone else deserves it more than I do. Crazy lies we tell ourselves. So share one sentence of your vision or a couple sentences of what your vision is for the area of your life you're working on, health, wealth, or relationships, or whatever it is for you. And I will be with you tomorrow. We are going to go right into the O of our SOAP framework. And I'm going to share my example of what's my situation, what's my fin a financial related one in the comments below. And then I, and I'll go into more detail on mine for you uh, just as an example. And then you just do yours, do your work, do your work. It only takes a few minutes. You know what your current situation is. You might not want to look at it. You might not want to see it. You might not want to be honest with yourself about it, but you totally, absolutely, positively know what it is. I know what mine is. You know what yours is. So then share the vision of it. Tomorrow, we will hop right into the O of our soul because that's where we really get creative. We really get to see the, the power that we have within us already. All right, have an amazing day. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I'm gonna go, I guess I'm not gonna go out in the rain, but I'm gonna go do some fun things. I'm gonna go bowling, go bowling with uh, my amazing little granddaughter. Have a great day.